the first, 31st of July. I thought I'd do a very brief video, or maybe not too brief depending on the level of experiments I do, about mains fridges in camper vans. Um, it's a question that seems to get asked a lot. Um, I've noticed that uh, there's two schools of thought. People are quite happy using standard camper van fridges um, and paying the extremely high retail prices for them. Um, a lot of people have tried doing mains fridges and some people try and do it just too cheaply. Buying poor quality fridges, really cheap inverters. So I thought I'd just show what I've done and then demonstrate um, the differences in power consumption between a couple of types of inverters. So this fridge is a brand called Inventor, or Inventor even. It's an A++ fridge, and that's one of the first things that's quite critical. You need an energy efficient fridge. There's no point doing this exercise if you go out and buy um, a poor quality fridge. This fridge, when operating, draws between 35 and 40 watts on the mains. That's pretty efficient. And the fridge in this van is running on this Victron Phoenix 12 stroke 500 inverter. It can only just about cope. Um, this inverter has two modes, normal on and eco. I bought this inverter for the eco mode because it reduces the standby current from around about an amp, 0.8 of an amp, down to 0.2 of an amp. But the way the eco mode works is it effectively poles by turning the mains on and off every few seconds to detect a current. My fridge doesn't like that because when the inverter poles by turning the voltage on, the compression of the fridge starts for a split second, then the inverter detects there's a requirement for energy. A few seconds later it comes up to full power and the compressor stalls. This happens maybe two or three times the day at the most. At that point in time the fridge draws about 35 amps, 600 odd watts. Um, it's not ideal. Um, I should have bought or I really do need to buy a more powerful inverter but Victron inverters or Victron everything is very very expensive so I wouldn't be able to, I couldn't justify myself three or four hundred pounds for a Victron inverter. You start to defeat the object of using a main fridge. But right now this inverter I'm sticking with it, it's working in the normal mode, we're not suffering any battery loss um, or energy loss overnight, so end result is it's sufficient for today. There's another downside with this inverter, the inrush current causes a very very audible transformer hum. Um, I was hoping it might actually turn on while I was standing here doing this. Um, it's annoying and that's probably the primary reason I'd actually get rid of this inverter at a later date. But for the purpose of today's experiment I'm now going to move into the workshop and show you an identical fridge, or at least identical as far as efficiency and maker compressor is concerned, and some other inverters that I've accumulated, um, one of which may actually replace this Victron. But that's the current setup in this van, an Inventor 43 litre um, fridge, a Victron 12500 inverter, Hanging off a couple of um, good quality AGM batteries. These are, these, are, um, these are batteries that actually came with this ambulance when I bought it. Now, Sam, your tail wagging doesn't really help the audience, does it? Now, quick talk about the setup. This fridge is a 93 litre inventor fridge. I've actually bought this for our other van, which we'll be using for a longer period, longer journeys. Um, it cost me 30 quid from eBay. You can see it's got dents in it. A lot of these um, seem to get damaged in transit. This was brand new. Um, I'm not bothered about a few dents for 30 quid. Um, absolute bargain. It has exactly the same make and model domper compressor in it um, as the other fridge in my other van. Um, and I've got this set up at the moment with the thermostat set to pretty much the minimum. I'm aiming to, will that zoom in? Keep it around about 5 degrees, which is what you expect in a fridge. Um, it's been on all night just to get the temperature down, but I've just put a large bottle of water in it and the temperature's come up very slightly. 
but I wanted um, uh, to just set the temperature. In fact, it's probably going to drop too much, but I'm going to leave the thermostat where it is now anyway. This fridge, unlike the one in the van, has also got a light in it. And it's worth bearing in mind that a mains light draws a fair amount of energy as well. This particular bulb draws about an, an additional amp. Um, I'm going to discount that from the test so the door will remain closed while I'm doing the tests. Um, but it is worth bearing in mind that um, do you really need a mains bulb in a mains fridge in a camper van? Um, if you're really bothered about energy, take it out, use a torch. Um, so, the setup I've got here at the moment, zoom back out again is one pretty much brand new Varta LDF90 battery. I like these. I bought a couple of these. One of them is actually the chassis battery in my um, Sprinter. This one will probably become the chassis battery in the Crafter. I was originally going to use them as leisure batteries, um, but I'm actually quite, getting quite a liking for uh, AGM batteries at the moment. Um, but anyway, today's exercise is just making use of this one battery. I've got all three, there's three inverters here, um, which I'll talk about more in a moment. I've got all three of them wired up at the moment, and I'll just be turning them on and off individually. Um, the little device in the middle there is a very, very cheap uh, and cheerful um, watt meter from Amazon. They are made by, or, or this particular brand I think was, was MC Tuning or something like that. And um, it displays volts. Current being drawn, wattage, and accumulated energy, which I've reset, which is why it only says 21. Um, but we won't be bothering about that. Also, um, I've got a battery charge connected simply to keep the batteries a float voltage so I get slightly more visibly consistent results. Um, and the last thing I've got attached is a CTEC battery monitor um, because I'm actually going to be leaving this running overnight on a couple of, on two of these inverters. I want to actually see how they hold up. Um, I get pretty good results from the Victron energy wise in the other van um, but um, one of these inverters below here may be more efficient if it remains reliable. What I've actually got here is a Kotec pure sine wave 1000 watt inverter. It's got a range of dip switches on the front, on the front, that um, allow you to configure various power management or power saving functions. In theory, it's a bit more sophisticated than the on-off ego button on the Victron. Um, you can determine the the wattage detection before it fires up. Um, for the purpose of today's experiment, I've actually got that turned off for the moment because every inverter has an overhead. Um, and I wanted to give a clear comparison. As I said in the uh, introduction, the Victron inverter has an overhead of around about 800 milliamps to an amp. This one right now, the fridge is just turned off, so this one right now has an overhead of does it show? 920 milliamps, 0.92 of an amp at 13.68 volts. Obviously that would change very slightly if it was 12 volts, it would probably be drawing nearer an amp. Um, and you can also see effectively um, if you if you take 12.68 um, divided by 0.92 you're going to get 12.7 watts. So this inverter is drawing 12.5 watts, 12.7 watts at the moment. Okay, When the fridge is on I've got a AC watt meter here and that displays the wattage being drawn by the fridge and the fridge alone. I can then get a fairly good comparison of how efficient the inverter is. Uh, and surprisingly this Kotec seems very efficient because when the fridge is running it's typically drawing about 35 watts. These are very very efficient these fridges. Uh, I'm really impressed with how good the compressor is. There's a watt meter there just shows the load of the fridge um, when the compressor kicks in. There is an enormous load through the inverter on the batteries. Huge. For a few milliseconds you're talking about a lot of energy. Um, I'm seeing 
800 watts being drawn. I actually think a transient is probably higher than that. And that's one of the things that needs to be taken into consideration. Yes, you can run a fridge on a tiny inverter, but will it start? No, it won't. That inverter's got to have the reserve capacity, I think, in the region of maybe kilowatt, 1500 watts, to cope with the inrush current as the compressor starts. Um, and that's the failing of my Victron inverter. It can't quite cope. It makes a horrible buzzing noise for a second or so as it fires up. And sometimes it cannot deliver enough power. The compressor stalls. And one of the advantages with these fridges is they've got a thermostat in them. So obviously if the compressor's stalled, it's drawing a lot of current, it's getting hot. The um, compressor then switches off. And next time around it will work. And I see this problem on the Victron once or twice a day. It's worse on the eco mode, which is why I'm not using eco mode on the Victron at all. Now, I've already tested this Kotec inverter using the fridge in the van, albeit on a mains extension lead and albeit using a totally different battery to this one. It was actually a, a gel battery, which I think is knackered. And this Kotec inverter went into over voltage protection several times. And unfortunately, this Kotec inverter doesn't have a self recovery mode. Once it shuts down, it stays shut down. Not an ideal situation for a fridge. Um, the Victron, if it goes into over, over voltage protection, resets itself. Um, so these are just things I'm mentioning because potentially you can buy a perfect good inverter, but if it goes into overload and shuts itself down just once with a fridge, you've got a load of um, warm, warm vegetables, warm, warm food in that fridge. So you don't want that happening. You need something that can actually um, recover from adverse events. The other inverter I've got here is a branded Sterling Power 1800 watt modified sine wave inverter. This is the inverter that came, um, let's just move the iPad, came with my um, original ambulance. I thought great, that's handy, a very used inverter. And for resistive loads, yes it is. But for inductive loads, a modified sine wave inverter will work, but it's inefficient. It draws a lot more energy, and that energy has to be going somewhere, probably in heating the compressor, because the compressor is effectively the thing that's drawing the more, more power. It's not the inverter that's drawing more power. And I'll demonstrate that shortly. And then lastly, I've got this little French inverter here. It says on the sticker, capable of 1200 watts. I'm not convinced it's capable of 1200 watts, and I'm not convinced it's probably... In fact, most of these inverters, I'm not convinced any of them are actually rated at the power they say they are, except maybe the Victrons. Um, but this little French thing, uh, bought it peanuts uh, on eBay. It's, the, it's got a display in it, which doesn't work properly. That's probably why the person sold it. But it actually functions as an inverter. It isn't intelligent, you can't do anything with it, there's no fancy settings on it to change um, into eco, eco, eco mode or anything like that. I've got more wired up with similar length cables, similar thicknesses, um, as I said, there's my battery charger there, it's an old caravan battery charger, actually a very good battery charger, very quiet, very low energy use when it's actually um, in float mode, very nice indeed. I've got that running just to keep the battery, as I said, at the, the float voltage, which you can see there, which is 13.7 uh, uh, volts. So, um, I'm probably going to have to do this over time lapse or over a period of time because this fridge cycles about every... In this weather at the moment, it's, it's cold, raining and overcast today on the 31st of July. Um, this fridge probably won't kick back in again for another minute or so. A uh, minute, 30 minutes or so. I've got some graphs that I may put a, a, a slide up for my other inverter overnight it's toggling on and off as the fridge demands energy about every 30 ish minutes um, and that's saying also bear in mind fridges aren't on all the time people say silly things like mains fridges are more inefficient than 12 volt fridges and camper vans and stuff like that they have nothing to measure that against you need to say this particular fridge is more or less efficient against another particular fridge. You can't just generalise because that's crazy. So the first, first thing to point out is just the inverter alone is 
is drawing slightly less current than the Kotec. 770 milliamps at the moment. Um, there might be a minuscule overhead from having the watt meter plugged in, but it's going to be minuscule. So as I said, right now, this inverter is drawing less current. Over an extended period of days, especially if it's overcast, these could be game changers or deal breakers. Um, so again, it's worth checking. There we go. Fridge just kicked in there. You saw that for a split second that flew up to 52 amps. Okay, and you can also see that via this inverter, that fridge is drawing 92, 92 watts at the moment and 6.6 .6 amps. The watt meter wrong way. The watt meter shows the fridge itself is drawing 60 watts. This is on the quasi sine wave inverter. It's much, much, much more inefficient. It's drawing 20 watts more than on, the, on a pure sine wave inverter. And we're seeing effectively an extra 3 amps being drawn. The overall efficiency of the modified square wave inverter it's just worse period. There was only a 12 watt difference between what the fridge was drawing and what the inverter was drawing using the Kotec. We're now seeing close to 30 watts difference. The fridge is currently drawing 55 watts and total draw off the batteries is 82 watts. So all in all, yes you can use it, I mean it's working, the fridge started up, you can, it's operating, but there's a lot of energy being used. The inverter itself is less efficient and the fridge is drawing a lot more current and that can only mean heat. If the compressor is not running efficiently it's going to be losing energy and heat. Um, and I'll say nothing more about that. I won't be doing any more experiments with this particular inverter. It simply isn't, isn't suitable for inductive loads. Um, it's great for um, well, probably ideal for running a small kettle on. Um, if I want to run some mains light bulbs on it, there's no difference at all. Um, no loss at all. But for anything with a motor in it, um, and potentially anything that's got some complicated electronics in it, I've seen some videos, uh, Greg Virgo's, I think, was one, where he had a, I think he's got a modified sine wave inverter, um, and he was getting some very strange behaviour on his iPhone. Um, it would charge okay. Um, he was using a mains charger rather than doing it off a USB um, for some reason. He could charge OK, but he couldn't interact with the screen. Um, it, the, the, the modified sine wave was interfering with the digitizer. Um, you see strange sittings when you modified sine wave inverters with televisions. You get, it, it, it's not a good idea. Um, so, I'll now plug in the little French Gi, I think it's a Gi 60 or something or other, um, and show you that one as well. Right, <clears throat> this is a little inverter plugged in now. This is probably the most e efficient of all four of my inverters. That's drawing 600 milliamps um, background on its own. Um, and it's got a little display. Um, it shows the voltage but I have no idea what the P or U means. Um, U may be USB, but P, no idea. It's supposed to sh show the current being drawn, um, but it doesn't work, and that's, I think, why it was sold on eBay. But, eh, you know, operationally, it works. Um, so I now need to wait for the fridge to... Um, <laughs> wake up and ask for some current 
and we'll see how this one holds up. I can't remember whether I've tested this one before with this fridge. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I think I did try it and I don't think it could cope. But we'll wait and see. The other thing to bear in mind is these are brand new fridges, both of them. Well, the other one's been in use for a few weeks now. Compressors may be a bit tight when they're new. I don't know. They may draw slightly more current. Um, I'm not seeing the, the consistent, the, 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 what's the right word? I'm not seeing the, um, a similar time scale for um, the, the compressor stalls on the fridge in the other van um, that I was when I first started. Then it, it was stalling pretty much one time in four, every couple of hours or so. Now it's perhaps once, twice a day. It could be the compressor's running in, it could be it draws less current now than it did when I first got it and the inverter can just about cope. Um, and the temperature's now risen up to 4.2 degrees. So I should imagine at some point in time, unless there's actually a timer, there we go. Right, that's failed. There's 31 amps being drawn there. The fridge is drawing 366 watts. The compressor hasn't started. And this is a fairly good example of what I'm saying. The inrush current has overloaded this inverter. So what will happen now is click. The compressor is basically overheating. The windings are um, drawing far, far too much energy and um, it shuts itself down because it's got a thermostat built into the compressor. So there's a fairly good example of what happens when an inverter goes into overload because it can't go with inrush current. So this alleged 1200 peak power that it says on the label of this inverter, frankly, is bollocks. Um, it can't cope um, at all. So, I won't bother with this one in the experiment either, either because frankly if it fails once it'll fail twice it'll fail ten times you know you can't rely on something that crashes and dies and and cannot deliver enough power to start the compressor up um, so that was a fairly good um, example uh, of the wrong inverter for the job this to a similar degree is what happens with the one the Victor inverter but the Victor inverter only does it the same once, once or twice a day. This thing, I should imagine, mm, won't be able to cope at all, uh, and we'll keep doing this. So I might give it one more cycle just to see if it actually does start up, because I'd like to see how much current the uh, fridge is drawing. It should be similar. But you saw just then um, it went into overload. The it couldn't provide enough mains voltage. In fact, I didn't capture. Then. Yeah, what I should have done, let's see, I think what we're trying to do that again and when it does it again. What I should have done, is that a quick look to see if it's actually producing any voltage? It certainly couldn't produce the current. These spanners. Right, so it's producing 229 volts. The fridge is drawing 360 watts, and now the compressor's kicked in. So eventually, the inverter was able to provide enough current for the compressor to start. And that compressor is now drawing 45 watts, 44 watts. The only thing about this watt meter is it it's got a display in it, and it keeps turning the backlight off. There's no way to keep it on. <laughs> Very annoying. There's the fridge. 39 watts, pretty much what it draws. 38 watts, pretty much what it draws um, in normal use. 
um, cut over to the display on the battery Let's just block that off and we can see pretty much the same level of efficiency for this little inverter um, 50 watts there 38 watts being drawn at the moment by the uh, fridge so the inverter itself is um, using about 12 watts an amp um, but as you've seen now the first time the compressor kicked in the inverter couldn't even start it up the compressor stalled drew an excess of 300 watts uh, and then the thermostat inside the compressor cut out second time round the compressor started the inverter again went into um, but the inverter again couldn't provide sufficient current this time before the thermostat cut in the inverter was able to just about start up it's really borderline um, and now the compressor on this little inverter is running quite happily but I simply would not be able to rely on this inverter as being um, a reliable energy supply for this fridge so what we do now is we go back to the Kotec because I want to demonstrate the power saving modes but I have a sneaky feeling <laughs> the fridge won't like that either pause I've set one of the dip switches on the front of the Kotec to uh, power saving mode I think it's set to um, switch on when it detects more than either 15 or 25 watts I can't quite remember what it says in the manual but you've got there's a range of options you can set this to um, don't quite understand the point of that you either want it to be able to detect power or not and I think the actual wattage is irrelevant but maybe there's a, a reason for that um, the other switch on the inverter just at the top there uh, three three of the power three switches are power saving the other one just changes from 50 to 60 Hertz um, so right now you can see the um, status LED flashing and if we look at the current being drawn um, previously this inverter was pulling about an amp and now you can see it toggling um, you're not going to get an accurate um, output from this display it's not fast enough but when it's off it's drawing 200 milliamps and when it's on and inverting it's got an overhead of, of one amp so ideally if this inverter works and remains reliable this is going to be the most efficient for me to run a fridge from because when it's polling for the fridge it's only drawing 200 milliamps which is lovely and obviously when the fridge is running it's um, fairly efficient as an inverter so I will now plug the uh, fridge back in again um, that will slightly skew what we're seeing on this display because the watt meter I'm using um, is oh, that little watt meter there is drawing some power and that's making the inverter have to take a little bit longer to detect whether it's actually an energy requirement so just plug it back in you'll see it burst in life and you'll see the status LED is now not it's not flashing as frequently as it was before because it knows there's something there and it's double checking okay. corgis hello corgis one corgi two corgis they go out for a walk when it's raining do you really want to go out for a walk when it's raining, Corgis? Um, so right now this status LED isn't polling at all. Now the display's gone off on the uh, watt meter and it's begun to start polling. So it's toggling it off, but it can see there is something there and therefore it's not polling quite as quickly as it was with the thing unplugged. Now if I take the watt meter out of the loop and just put the fridge in, um, this should flash on and off uh, at a faster rate of knots. 
So there I've just unplugged the watt meter. Um, the fridge is now plugged in and the status LED is polling um, faster and the current on the meter is currently 200 milliamps. Um, as I say, the watt meter itself has got an overhead and I should imagine the same thing if I open the door and the light comes on. Now that's handy. It's only a 15 watt light bulb in there. I'm pretty sure, thinking about it, I've got this dip switch set in on 25 watts. So that's really useful. <laughs> the bulb doesn't come on um, unless the fridge is running. Uh, that might be useful. It might actually be able to keep that bulb in there. But as you can see, quite happily pulling away, waiting for the fridge compressor to start up. And then in an ideal world, the inverter will kick in and start the fridge up. What I think will happen is it will do similar to what the Victron does. For a split second it's going to energise a compressor. Um, if there isn't then a sufficient delay before the inverter kicks in for real, that compressor is going to stall. Um, and I have a feeling when this inverter does that, it goes into overvolted protection and shuts down. And that's rubbish. That's no good to me whatsoever. So we'll see in a minute whether it does or doesn't do it. Um, that's certainly what happened when I tried it before um, but I was using a gel battery which I think is faulty or dying it may not be able to have the cranking voltage it may not be able to develop the current um, and I was also testing the fridge on a dirty right extension lead so you know it wasn't ideal um, so we'll just leave that running for now and see what happens so the fridge has just kicked in The compressor started instantly. I was expecting this to do the same as the Victron. The Victron detects the requirement and then waits about 10 seconds before turning the power on. This one came on straight away. And similar amount of energy use. 40 watts for the fridge, 12 watts for the uh, inverter. So, what I'm going to do now is just leave this inverter running. I'd like to use this one in the van um, for a couple of reasons. A, because it's more powerful. Um, B, because it's potentially more energy efficient. And C, because it does make an horrible blinking buzz <laughs> when it kicks in. So I'm going to leave this running now overnight. Um, and I will actually run it without the uh, battery charger connected because I want to actually um, see if it holds up. So that'll do for now. Good morning. It's uh, August 1st. The fridge has now been running for 24 hours on this one battery using the uh, Kotec inverter. I'm very pleased. The inverter hasn't locked up at all. I'm now wondering if uh, my original experiment um, which wasn't wired up in the same way, uh, was compromised. Uh, I'm very happy because this inverter doesn't make any of the horrible noises that the Victron does, and when it's in power saving mode, the current it's drawing is negligible. It's very, very good. Um, this battery, uh, the fridge is run at the moment, 3.7 amps, and the battery is showing 12.27. Um, Offload the battery is still at 12 and a half volts, 96%. So, just this one battery alone would run this fridge quite happily um, for two or three days. If we've got down to 80%, that's more than enough for me. Um, my current fridge has been running in the van on the Victron inverter for weeks and weeks now, um, and the solar panels are keeping the batteries fully charged during the day. Um, it's completely standalone. The only time I actually plug in the uh, main charger is when the chassis battery needs charging and there's a dual charger. So then it does actually do a bulk charge on the uh, leisure batteries. But the vast majority of the time it's running perfectly happily um, on the two batteries I've got in the other van. So I'm going to leave this now running for another um, two or three days unless I need this table. Because <laughs> I'm busily doing plumbing in the van. Uh, I'm just curious to see when this battery gets down to 80%. Uh, but right now 
my confidence in Kotex come up considerably compared to when I first just plugged it in and thought, oh, it's not going to work either. Uh, time will tell. But uh, I'll, I'll finish this video off now and we'll upload it to YouTube because the rest of the experiment is just for my own personal interest really to see if I can actually make use of this inverter. So I just wanted to get to the point where I can trust it. Anyway, thanks for watching.